Hi y'all, I'm Flo Davis. For those of you that don't know me, it's been a while uh, since I did spiritual stuff. Um, but I need to get back on this because the reason I started doing spiritual stuff in the beginning, I mean besides it being like my calling, is because I was giving people individual device, I mean advice uh, separately. And uh, that just came out from doing that again with a very, very close friend of mine. And um, I was like, this is a good one because this is stuff that I went through as well before you become like Zen or one of yourself or before you like start meditating and being present in the now. So the title of this lecture will be the success trap. Um, if you're on YouTube and you're watching me, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you violate that like button if you like this video. So again, I'm entitled this one, the success trap. And this is how we all are programmed and ingrained into the success trap. So the success trap is like the thought or the perception that you always have to be climbing higher, 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 higher. And it starts, the programming starts from the beginning. You go to school, and then you go to college, then you get a job, then if you get the job, you have to get promotions, or if you, it doesn't, even within, it even gets into success traps with your happiness too. Say like, okay, if you're, uh, say, I, so I deal with a lot of people in music, so say you're doing music, and say maybe you've even um, received a reasonable amount of success, you still have this mindset like, okay, once I get this, this goal, I need to be climbing this, climbing it, and there's no breath or no observation of what you have accomplished already looking back and you're what are you chasing is you're actually chasing a feeling like this moment or this expectation okay once i get this goal or once i get to this piece i'll be happy but you realize even with like you like you could be going in a flow where you're you're receiving all your goals and getting everything that you want but every time you get it, you're going you're you're running after um this type of um excitement and the and actually, I always had I had a books uh, kind of the power of habit, and there's another one, a yellow book, something about um, happiness, like happiness index. But it kind of talks about the happiness index and, and those patterns in there. You'll always be chasing after this, or you always be looking for because there's two, right? There's two ways that you could approach things. There's two kind of people in life. So there's really successful, driven people like my close friend and me that I was that person for a very long time where you'd be like, okay, I don't mind delayed gratification. I'm always working. I'm always going to the next goal. And I, and, I, and then there's another type of person that's like, okay, everything is just instant. Everything is about now. Those Both those are two axioms of ways that you can do things. They're both completely wrong. Um, just like I speak about everything, it's about balance. It's balancing your life. It's not everything. It doesn't have to be happening right now. You have to find a balance of like, Okay, when should be I should be waiting? What stuff is for happiness right now? And I think the best way and the best solution for that is just being present and being in a present moment and appreciating what you have and being about with okay, doing your priority list, looking at balances and being like, okay, this is what I can do now. This is what can make me happy now. These are things that I can wait and this is worth towards waiting on and not searching so much for a feeling. But just being okay and being happy in you. Like I said, we have an issue where we're looking for too much response from outside. And that's why you'll never be satisfied. You're looking for too much praise from your friends. You're looking too much praise for your family. So that's why every time you do something, you put it on Facebook or you put it on Twitter. You're looking for too much outside when it only your true joy only becomes from inner because outside can be very fickle. Like, you see it with celebrities all the time. Like, you know, a lot of fans that are like, I feel like for some celebrity, I'm a true fan of certain artists, so like, or a true fan of certain, like, athletes or whatever. So, like, but most people are fickle, so you can't base your satisfaction on your happiness on outside. So that's the first step, like, the, but again, the entire society sets it that way. That's why, actually, I love MySpace over Facebook. Facebook is a very external uh, factor and so is Instagram. They're very like external driven. Uh, MySpace was more internal driven. It's like you got your own little page. You design it internally. It was everything from you. So look for your gratification and satisf satisf satisfaction. <laughs> I'm making up words, <laughs> but look for your gratitude and your uh, and things that satisfy you from inside without. And that's the problem. People are outside within, and that just doesn't work. Everything that is 
outside you is actually a projection of yourself. Even the people that are around you, like I have another spiritual friend, actually she could tell you that, like it's about you, you're talking about people, a lot of people, your projections and things that you don't like in them are like projections of yourself. So really take inventory of what's going on on the inside, slow down and be present. Like, you know, hang out. Who who gets this really well? Older people, actually. Like, we talk so much about older people. Like, oh, maybe they don't know Facebook or maybe they don't. But when it comes to life, I mean, they're 80, 60, 70, They get it. They understand. That's why they'll stroll through the park. So, because you're always rushing to what goal? Like, slow down. That's your main problem. If you slow down, you appreciate, like, things you have. And think about your experience and stuff like that. Like, sometimes we move so fast we don't experience. And again, I said, that's all symptoms of the program, you know, and um, I put this not too long ago, j jokingly, but I really meant it um, as well. This kind of jokingly thing I put up on Facebook about nature and healing and stuff like that. Like if um, nature heals anxiety a lot, because when you get out something fake, like this fake matrix or this fake, you know, concrete jungle or this work environment or this need to always be running, 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 this rat race, which is, it doesn't matter how, what level you're at, you're still, like, if, you're my, if your mindset is about mental, right, so whether you're working for someone else, or even as an entrepreneur, even as a musician, or even as a, you still can be in the same frame of mind phase, phase because you're never satisfied, you're chasing after some type of happiness internally, and you can't get it, because it's, it's, it's your mindset, your mindset first, and Slow down, be happy, take an inventory of your emotions of how you feel. Um, this is definitely one of the advice I gave her. Like, take an emotion of the inventories of how you uh, feel, and your emotions are your closest connection to the spirit. So, like I told you, everything in this matrix is giving you the opposite of what is true and what's for spirit. So, if you're emotionally, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Period. Use your emotions, use your spirit, use your what they call it, instinct. Use that because that's the guide to what's true, which is your spirit. Everything else is kind of like fake. But anyway, I was going on this rant to like when you're so out of touch and you're out of so in tune, out of touch with what who the true you is. Um, one of the ways that helped me a lot and then uh, one of the best spiritual teachers I still use. And that's why I speak. That's why I speak nature, because there's no greater teacher than Mother Nature. Go out there and lay your back on a tree, plant your plant your feet, look into the sun, get the energies that kind of clarify and will detoxify all this extra stuff that you got going on. Then you can slow down and and be spiritual. Then you got vegetarian and vegan, even though I'm a pescatarian now that I do eat fish like sometimes. But I mean, there's some weeks like you don't. And this is another thing, too. I want to speak on this. This is random off topic and let me talk about vegan vegetarian however you feel like it it works for me right it makes me happy but like you know if it doesn't work for you that's fine but this is this is the point that i'm trying to make people are too attached to like whatever they feel they need like okay spiritually i felt like veganism and vegetarian is better you i'm like calm or it's not a lot not as much energy from the stressed animals um, that I'm eating. But here's another thing. This is the big point. If you cannot, you should be able to pick up and put down any fucking thing. If you have an issue where you can't stop doing something, you have to really, you, that's an addiction. For most people, food is addiction. You should be able to put up, put down anything. And I, and I mean anything, clothes. Because at the end of the day, once you leave this realm, it'll just be you. So you really should take an inventory of like what you can pick up and, and, and what you think that you need because you don't need any fucking thing. Actually, in the beginning, when the energies were a little bit better and it was just, we were, most of us were just breatharian, we're just like fucking walking plants. You don't need food at all. So there's people that do like breatharianism. Like that's like whole nother fucking level but you have to check yourself and be like okay what i need and what i don't need so that's more like i said everything is a spiritual thing you know people and and you shouldn't be so attached to anything where you have to go on facebook and put a whole fucking rant about it and that's that's how i'm speaking i'm not down in anyone that's not vegetarian or anything like that but what i'm saying is you should be able to pick up and put down any fucking thing that's anything. Spouse, partner, family, that's anything. You have to, You we have this attachment issue. You can't be attached to anything in reality, like especially, especially um, 
and that's where they got what they were trying to say in the Bible uh, about like revelation and go that you can't be attached to anything. Go only you are responsible for you, your own you. So all that baggage when you read it, you can't be so attached to like this way of eating because it be, can be completely wrong, and then it can change again. It like this adaptability. So like. And that's when it, the balance of like when you talk about evolution and stuff is change and adaptability. If you can't change, you'll die. Period. So that's really what it's about. You have to be adaptable, and you can't act like you need any. You don't need anything. <laughs> but it's just simple. Like you, what, like soon, like you guys will get it. You really don't need anything. But anyway, I just went on uh, a whole different rant. But the main rant, like I said, I was trapped in this for a very long time. And even my cousin brought it up to me, like, you know, but now I'm in a lot, a lot more common space. I'm always going for the next goal or the next this or next that. It's fine. Like, I, I live life as I do the best that I can every day. My main goal for me in my life this time is stability. And I don't mean stability when it comes to a job, but creating a st stable foundation for myself. However, I, I, I sit on it and also faith, but that comes with being present. You can't be, you can't be, you can't build without being here. You know, your, your focus today is what builds tomorrow. So like the future and the past, they're irrelevant. The only thing like you have to really slow down is be present. And bad anxiety comes from living in the future. You have to live here. Like regret and depression comes from living in the past. So, but you'll see, like the programming has us either two places: the future or the past. You need to be here. Here builds your future. But the, all there is is all there is is just recurring moments of presence. Like that's what you guys have to understand. There's just focus of presence, time, and all this stuff. That's illusion. All you have is ever present moments. Um. Now, so there's like power. Now there's so many. So many um, books. There's an entire forum that I went to on this like this lecture. Like, um, God, I can't remember. I used to talk about it all the time. But like, I spent like five hundred dollars on it. Like this different lecture, and they were talking about the power of now and the present now, and how just now and bringing your focus in now is really how you excel because people are living too many places. Like it's now and just readjusting your focus. Um, there was one example about. Um, a, a great, a super, a dupe, like a dope tennis player, right? Um, it wasn't Serena and Venus, but hell, I used them for example. But I think it was like Andre Agassi or something like that. But like we talk about, like some pitches coming at him. Oh man, I don't know tennis, so I'm way off. <laughs> but like sometimes to throw it at him, it might be 150 miles or 120 something miles an hour, and phew, and he he hits it with such accuracy. But when you think about like his focus, he's and when he sees the ball. It's like in slow motion when he is so he doesn't have the same perception that we have. But again, that comes from intent, focus and being in the present. So whatever you do, be focused on the present. That's what creates your reality. And like I said, they know that the people that own this matrix, that's why they got you here and here. But like I said, that's why they do all this programming stuff in movies, because their mind, they, they already know that the mind and all that creates the reality. So that's why they'll have you on like all these distractions stuff and that, which I've watched none. I don't watch any Trump. I don't watch shit because I already know like it's a distraction. It's like, it's foolery. <laughs> it's, it's foolery and bacoonery. What is that? How is that going to relate to my life on Twitter? You could turn those, turn anything on him off, you know what I'm saying, so like, that that's not going to build or create anything that's going to be productive for me, so why even listen, so I, I really don't do much distractions, I don't think I watch TV at all, um, like, sometimes I might watch, like, Fire Stick or something, but anyway, just ranting and ranting and ranting and ranting on, uh, the main thing is, be present, slow down, be happy with who you are now, and if you don't know, Take time, slow down, and find yourself. Like, if it might be by yourself for a while, find yourself is a, can be a very strong process. But I'm just trying to get people out of success trap because the success trap, you're always going here and here and here. And you could have all the money in the world. You could all have all this shit and still not be happy. So that that is that's the race of, like, the success trap. It always has you climbing. There's no satisfaction because prime is if you're looking for satisfaction outward on or outward feeling and like that's not that's not it. You're always chasing some type of goal. Stop chasing. Be be here. Be now. And that will help a lot from the success trap. So peace.
uh, peace and love and blessings. Um, stay praying. Um, I still, I still pray. I'm gonna pray into yourself. Namaste.